studies that examined a patient with coronary kidney disease with a stage 3 to 5 uh, uh, coronary kidney disease, and they have different ventricular hypertrophy, and the BTH was more than 55 microgram per minute. And we uh, then went and looked at signs to receive medical control. And the placebo is around 31 each group. And the primary endpoint for this patient is the left ventricular uh, change in the left ventricular mass index. Medical control treatment significantly reduced the interactivity edge exactly like what was done in the real trial, as well as the number of cardiovascular related hospitalizations. That's fine. However, the 52 weeks, which is the duration of the study of the treatment, was over the medical control of one microgram, one time daily, significantly improved secondary hyper bar, but did not alter or change the measures of left ventricular structure and the function in patient with severe coronary kidney disease. Now we come to the evidence from the recent guidelines from 2017, KT guidelines, which have been changed a lot from the 2009 guidelines in just very few uh, slides I'm going to mention. For example, this a statement from the uh, KTGO, uh, in patient with chronic kidney disease, stage 3A to stage 3 and 5 on dialysis, uh, uh, KTGO suggested that 25 hydroxyvitamin D levels might be measured and repeated testing determined by the baseline value and therapeutic intervention. Okay, and they suggested also that vitamin D deficiency and insufficiency be corrected using treatment strategies recommended for the general population. Second statement here is the new guidelines. In the adult patient with chronic kidney disease, grade 3A to grade 5, not on dialysis. They suggested that calcitriol and the vitamin D analogs not to be routinely used as I mentioned earlier. We save it for patients who are not responding to natural vitamin D, for example, I'm sorry, to not correct it on the calcium supplementation and speed binding. And they have higher level of vitamin of uh, BTH not responding to the, the traditional modality of calcium supplementation and vitamin. Uh, vitamin uh, and uh, and uh, phosphate line. And the patient was on kidney disease on the analysis requiring BTH lowering therapy. They suggested that calcium mimetics, calcium or vitamin D and those or combination of calcium mimetic with calcium triol or vitamin D and those to be used. And this is the and I think this is and good strong evidence to be and it is strong and something we can do. Uh, the other uh, statement from the key team in patient with chronic kidney disease, starting from grade 1 to grade 5 transplant patient, this was the time that we had 25 hydroxy vitamin D, calcium levels might be measured and repeated testing determined by the baseline, as I mentioned the earlier, in patient with chronic kidney disease. So the same thing with transplant would be applied to patients on uh, 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 chronic kidney disease. Uh, so my conclusion, Mr. Chairman, and take home message that vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. And vitamin uh, D was found in many kinds of foods and made in the body uh, after exposure to ultraviolet rays. And the major biological function is to maintain normal blood levels of calcium and phosphorus. However, other tissues like macrophages, prostate, breast, and kidneys also they have vitamin D receptors. And the plantomic effects of vitamin D that I mentioned earlier, okay, for, because of uh, hydroxylation of other tissues, are very uh, myriad and a lot and share in all uh, active process around the body systems and tissue and in chronic kidney disease and transplant vitamin D has a important role in management of secondary hyper parathyroidism and mineral and bone loss. Thank you. Thank you very much for this presentation. Really very comprehensive and uh,
covers a lot of issues regarding this vital topic, which is vitamin D. And now it's open for your questions. Yes,
the other, I mean, then you type it up according to the response after four to eight weeks, and then you may increase the dose if there is no enough response. And then after three to six months, then you may achieve the maximum response that you have or not. If it is not achieved after six months of treatment, then there is resistance to vitamin D. You should be careful. Merci, le professeur, pour cette présentation très édifiante. Non, mais je... Merci bien, le professeur, pour cette présentation très édifiante. Alors, la question de Trouble Mineralo aussi, euh, une question très pertinente. Euh, et moi, j'aimerais savoir euh, par rapport au rôle antifibrosant de la vitamine D. Alors, certaines données de la littérature pensent que la vitamine D pourrait avoir un rôle dans la nephroprotection. J'aimerais savoir euh, votre avis par rapport à, à cet aspect. Et la deuxième question, quelles sont les dernières alternatives thérapeutiques dans le cadre de la prise en charge, cette fois-ci, d'une hypervitaminose D Merci. Antifibrotic effect of vitamin D. Uh, why not? Because it is just inducing a lot of, a lot of pleotropic uh, effect. May protect against cancer, against uh, protect the immune system, modulate the immune system, protect against uh, breast cancer and prostatic cancer. So why not? It may, of course, it may help. And uh, as, uh, as one of the, uh, uh, as one of the uh, antifibrotic. As I mentioned, we can just go to show the slide again. It's uh, here in this slide. In this slide, which we should have here, is an anti proliferative effect everywhere. For example, there's tumor cells. So now, please just have anti proliferative If you allow me, Professor Kamal, from this point, yes, from observational studies, there are some relations between vitamin D use and the foundation of secondary depression. But these data are extrapolated from observational studies. And up to this moment, although it is rational uh, to have a positive effects of vitamin D, but up to this moment, this mechanism needs further study. Because no evidence is for that. Hypervitaminosity. Um, Hypervitaminosity. I think the first thing to do is just to stop vitamin D. And I don't know what to do later. The, 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 more, the, the more important is how it's, how it's treated. Oh, yeah. you, you find cases, and uh, here in this center, we have. Uh, I am in front of this one case. For the 75 years, biopsy confirmed the diagnosis of a child who was on vitamin D and nephrocalcinosis in the biopsy. Mm -hmm. And this is the only case that I uh, have experience in. I don't know if my professors have cases of hypervitaminosis D. No, I cannot say that I feel in the clinical practice with cases with hypervitaminosis, but we feel so much 
disturbance of the normal internal environment of our patients by prescribing calcium carbonate and alpha calcium. Uh, calcium. So, whenever we, we found a normal bone profile, it is better to keep the patient in his normal environment and not to disturb this because this will be followed by another machine complication. And the, actually, the, the um, uh, measurement of vitamin D is a very expensive one. <coughs> if you are going to, to reach a regular medium of three months or six months, it's not a team. And by the way, and it, it, there are some experts have mentioned that can be measured only once in a lifetime. So it's just to know the difference. Even if you do, even if you do a uh, medicine test and take the medicine, just we know that to take 10, 10 months, for example, 10,000 international units, intramuscular, then we give uh, the 5,000, 400, 10,000, 400, uh, 200,000, 200,000 intramuscular uh, injection for three months, then we give 10,000 international units per day for another six months or so, that's it. So we do, uh, and Dr. May and other professors can many can tell us their experience of the patient. I, I want to comment on the first question. Yes. I understood the question right. Uh, it was that they did not, did not have uh, measurements for the vitamin D. And then I believe that in this case, you shouldn't be giving the mega doses. If you don't have the document, that is really deficient. So we should not be starting with the mega doses. Now, my question to you is, if you give one uh, 25 dihydroxyvitamin D, the active form, why do you give the native vitamin D to be activated into 25 hydroxy and then one 25 hydroxy vitamin D? Why not give the active form from the start unless the native form has different mechanisms of action? I think nowadays there is, I mean, there is trend toward uh, adopting the uh, natural vitamin D to be given to patients with chronic kidney disease before dialysis. And as I mentioned here, if we don't have enough substrate for vitamin D, natural result with the 25 hydroxy vitamin D, then the 125 hydroxy vitamin D will not be formed. And uh, even if the kidney is not the only place for production, of 125 hydroxy vitamin D, then the other rotations, as I mentioned earlier, may share and may have in the transformation and hydroxylation to 125 hydroxy vitamin D. So, this is my assumption. I think also, uh, Professor Kamal, uh, from a lot of observation and study, I, I imagine that vitamin K now will be a secret of life. It will be included in a lot of, uh, in a lot of observation and study, and pregnancy will prevent pre-eclampsia and toxemia of pregnancy, uh, prevent premature delivery. In, uh, in uh, children, it uh, decreases the uh, lutes, increases the growth, in asthma, it decreases asthma, it decreases the neurologic disease and the flare-up of lupus. Uh, the cardiovascular disease, it is very important uh, to be given with heart failure and they have a lot, and uh, also preventable, as you said, preventable of many cancers. So I think you now the vitamin D will be included in prevention of a lot of uh, disease. Uh, but uh, up till now, up till now, can a can you uh, 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 actually uh, as I asked the professor before, can actually now we put vitamin D as one of the routine management of uh, a lot of uh, disease, even without uh, vitamin D as uh, no, I can I can't say that. Yes, we have to have measured vitamin D before giving this kind. It is very nice, very nice, very nice drug, okay? But if, can, if it's not given in the right way, and if there is enough uh, more vitamin D, then we have. And uh, this is kind of uh, what we call a double arm, armed weapon. It in, the, in one side, it will just protect against all of these, but if not given in the right way, it may have hypervitaminosis, or it may have a dynamic bone disease, or it may have uh, vascular calcification and so forth. At so least in African countries and the sunny region, we can expose ourselves to some, especially from 10 o'clock to uh, 3 o'clock, 
uh, only for uh, 15 to 20 minutes per day, five days a week, it will be enough more than giving the routine. Yes. Yes. yes, if we do that, the patient actually can just manage it. Just for it. Merci professeur pour cette présentation. Première pour nous. J'ai une question. Je crois savoir que dans certaines littératures, il a été incriminé que dans certaines néphopathies tubulaires, qui a des troubles, qui a des troubles, on, certaines des peuvent s'accompagner des troubles de la vitamine D. Qu'est-ce que vous en pensez, vous, personnellement Et je voulais en plus de cette question partager euh, un cas clinique d'un de mes patients que je suis pour euh, un syndrome néphrotique pur lié à une glomérulonephrite extrêmement glamuse et qui a une hypocalcémie isolée qui a été explorée chez nous en France et que en tout cas le bilan d'exploration est devenu normal par rapport à la vitamine D, par rapport à la PTH. Mais cette hypocalcémie est là. On continue malheureusement à supplémenter le patient avec la médication. Parce que toutes les explorations sont revenues négatives. Est-ce que vous avez une idée euh, par rapport à, au cas de ce malade aussi Merci beaucoup. Thank you for your questions. How about vitamin D vitamin D about uh, in this patient? That's what I answer, I understood. Is to look first at serum albumin 
to find the corrected hypocalcemia or not, then serum uh, beta H and vitamin D, these are the most important two players. Other drugs that can affect, and one of the most important rights that can be associated with resistant hypocalcemia which is hypomagnesium. So this is my advice. Even if it doesn't solve, this is what we have. <laughs> again, yeah, again, actually, do you, how much of the calcium you give the patient? Okay, you should give at least 1.5 millimeter calcium, 1.5 gram before you're know, just telling that is hypercalcemic. 1.5 millimeter calcium. So it is, it is a complex case, complex for you and complex for us. <laughs> so we'll move to the point of uh, the Professor Donia. Yes, vitamin D3 is better than the vitamin D2, but there are a lot of 